the most common questions. Uh, so most common questions that uh, we already like know that people ask after this tutorial. And after that, uh, that's going to be a tricky part of this tutorial. We actually will adjourn for general audience, but I will stay and first answer kind of more complex questions, if you have one, and I will actually show some advanced stuff, like, uh, for example, okay, you will, by the end of the tutorial, you will figure out what you are So uh, let's start actually with the software. So here on this slide is probably the most Simplify the diagram of the software chain, right? Where on the top we have uh, Monte Carlo generators and maybe file outputs from the Monte Carlo generators. And uh, on the bottom we have a reconstruction and analysis. And actually, this uh, arrow on the left shows that sometimes you just want to process the results from the generator, raw generator results. Right, but then you certainly need some smearing or the fast detector simulation. And at some point, certainly there should be a full detective simulation. So uh, today's tutorial will cover actually this part uh, with a fast simulation of direct processing. And uh, that's probably good first uh, introduction to our field of tutorials, which is going to be for January 29th. Uh, like in uh, uh, further, I will just have additional announcements about these tutorials. Right? But now let's go back. And uh, what is the software actually that used on this image in this tutorial? So for Monte Carlo, we will use uh, pre, pre, uh, pre made uh, files from PFA, Beagle, and Herbic generators. We uh, will use for fast simulation, it's going to be uh, used AC smear. Uh, I will cover this in the next slide. And for analysis and reconstruction, we're going to use this EPR package. So, uh, EAC Smear is actually our joint effort to support uh, this package from BNL and Jefferson Lab, and it's uh, created for fast prototyping of uh, detectors. So it tries to answer the question. Okay, this is luck. So it tries to answer the question that even uh, if you know approximately the detector performance, how well can you measure some observables? or kind of what precision do I need to measure some uh, X value or something. So it's probably important to note that EIC white papers uh, widely use this package to actually produce plots. Uh, so uh, I don't know if uh, Kulia Kauder is actually here, which is the main uh, photo of this image. So, okay, I will answer. So also for this tutorial, we will use, and just this will happen like in one minute, we will start using this Jupyter Lab and Jupyter environment, which nicely combine together like lots, uh, code, and some documentation. That's actually the reasons why we are using this policy. So let's proceed to it. So if you could please uh, copy past this top screen to the, uh, some your terminal. Right. So Docker run and all the Slack folders. Yeah. When you run the comment, uh, it will create some output, and the uh, important part here is this address. It's actually always the same. So it's uh, local host port 8888 or the 217001. Uh, I will probably do this somehow. Just I, I probably will put this line to Lugin's uh, chat, so it might be a little bit easier for you. You copy past it. And now I'm actually doing this. Right. So, yeah, I have a little bit cheat. I already have this line. We actually start it. And here is this address. I just copy it, or I can just put it in the address line on the center. The address is always the same. So I'll just create a new window for this. And yeah, that's what what what, what do you see? Uh, please could anyone and actually you see the same. Let me uh, do it a little bit uh, a little bit larger. So here's the line how to run it. Actually, once again. 
So please, can anyone say that you succeeded with this and, this, and you get the thing running? Uh, because for the other people in the room, it's hard for me to tell how much time should I give, should I wait on this first step. I haven't drawn it yet. <laughs> so you don't? You know, I haven't, I haven't drawn it. No way. <laughs> and yes, we have the first uh, actually visitor in our room. That's right. Please, anybody confirm that you got to this step so we could actually continue and hope that everybody else did it too. I've succeeded. <laughs> Thank you very much. So I would hope. I it. <laughs> yeah, good. Because I would hope, and actually uh, there will be one more a little bit talk. So uh, if somebody is still downloading or doing stuff, uh, there will be still a little time. So uh, on the left side, so all this thing is called the Jupyter Lab of this shell. So on the left side, uh, there is a uh, file, uh, there actually is some directory. Please follow the tutorial. And open, the, and open this file zero dive in. So that was what I have. Yes, I'm in the presentation. So uh, here is what you should see. So I know that many people actually already know how to use Jupyter Lab, what is Jupyter, what is that. But I also know that always on these tutorials, uh, there are a lot of people who never worked with it, and even if it is secured, they never try that to run it by themselves. So for those who know, please actually uh, let me uh, be a little bit just very, uh, very slow on the starting with this. So here, this part, if uh, this thing called Jupyter Lab in general, so this document is called Jupyter Notebook. And if, uh, so in this Jupyter Notebook is Dive an example, which is actually pre-made analysis, which is made by C++, C++ by Yulia Fuletova. And uh, they actually, the analysis by itself will be on this tutorial. But if you scroll down, you will see text, you will see the code, and you will see plots. And uh, some of these plots we will try to recreate uh, during these tutorials. And you can see, for example, in D meson mass. Uh, so on the left side, uh, this is the result from the generator. They can just direct it from generator. And on the right is uh, the result uh, taken, taken from smear. Right. So once again, uh, and also you see that those plots here are not really interactive. They are pictures. And during these tutorials, we actually will make them interactive. Uh, at least we'll try. So going back to the top of it, uh, once again, it's a little bit of uh, introduction to the Jupyter for those who don't know how to, what it is. So as you can see, actually, the Jupyter notebook consists of the cell. And first cell, when I click on it, you see this uh, blue line on the left, which actually means that the cell is active. And the cells might be a text, or it might be the code, right? So if I click on the next cell, it's the code. And uh, you see the blue line on the left show that this cell is active. And on the top, there is a button, which is like a play button for all players, right? And if I execute the cell, it prints up hello, here I see you, hello world, or whatever. Which actually show us that cells may also have some output. And certainly that was easy output of the text. But on the next cell, and by the way, you see that the next cell became active, right? So on the next cell, uh, it will output some lattice formula. And if we, for example, click on the text, on this large text above, so if I click two times on it, uh, you will see that it will change for some markup language. So it's written in markdown, and if you don't know this name, it's something similar that happens in the wiki, right? So when I play, when I run this play button, it's going back to this nice chromatic text. So we actually will play with notebook for the whole uh, of this tutorial. So now from this pre-made tutorial, and what actually happens is this notebook, we just take uh, 
kind of the pictures from the paid pre-made files from uh, Julia analysis, which is not interesting. So please go and proceed with uh, the next file, which is called process legal file. So it actually just consists from one image that depicts what will happen in this uh, actual picture or in this uh, Jupyter uh, notebook. And basically, we will just take a Beagle file and uh, do some, once again, pre-made analysis. So in the future, we will go how you make analysis. But for this time, it's just a free, uh, it's just a free cell. First cell is just uh, input and analyze everything. So the second cell called this channel plugin function. I don't want to go into details about this right now. I will go uh, with details in a little bit further, but I could say at this moment that Java plugins, uh, they're all with uh, Linux philosophy that uh, it's some module. It's just actually it's just a small library, and one library usually do one thing. So even if you don't know this API, or even if you don't know uh, the Python, I believe that it should be clear for you what's happening here. So we want to read the Beagle file. And first, we use this plugin called Beagle Reader. So then, as I said, that we will use some pre-made analysis for this example. And we'll move to our own analysis a little further, right? And we activate the plugin called Bmeson. We want to write some output file out of uh, this plugin. So we actually add this line called Event Writer. It will create a root tree out of so uh, the package actually called Jana. So the next plugin is a little bit special. It configures Jana itself. It says that we want to process 10,000 events, and we want to have an output named like this. And finally, as you could guess, uh, here is the source file. Actually, you can uh, navigate there and see this file which is at this moment. So we just run the spell, and Jana say that it's configured. It says what is the plugin, what is the source. And finally, we do this channel run, and it actually starts processing the event. Uh, so uh, it processed 10,000 and okay, one event. And uh, actually, what happened behind that this Python package was just used to easily configure the Java. If you open up this run command, you can see what exact command uh, was used to run uh, this uh, Jana underneath of this. So it will be repeated actually several times during this presentation that uh, with all this Jupyter and Python stuff, we don't want to hide uh, some kind of complexity. We won't, don't want to hide what's happening inside. So on each level, we try to make pretty really explicit what happens. OK, I will cover this. So as you can see, on the left, we have now Beagle root file. And if you double click on it, you actually open it in the new root browser called JavaScript root. If you don't know it, they actually are going to be a part, they, they kind of, their future development is called root 7. And uh, this is part of it. So actually, root team uh, kind of, I don't know, privately open the all set. Uh, this is graphical user in the case is going to be like future. So you see there's two, uh, there's a Beagle root file on the left, and there are the two directories, uh, one called vector meson with uh, the plots, which are results of, uh, of this analysis, right? And if you click on these plots, they're pretty much usual root plots. You can, for example, click on the right, they're fully interactive. You can click on the right button and, for example, uh, uh, change how it's written, right? You can drag actually this uh, start box, you can actually add uh, other stats to it and do whatever it wants, right? And if you navigate to the event directory, so this way I'm just looking what's inside this root tree as a result of running this stuff. You see there's actually a tree uh, with some events written into this tree. So I don't know, if you click on any branch, it will actually build you this one. So it's pretty much uh, kind of like usual key browser. But now let's go actually back to, you can actually play a little bit more with it. And uh, let's go back to this floating data. So example number three. 
And just for you a little bit uh, have opportunity to play maybe with this root browser or something, I will give you what and uh, 30 steps. Uh, and once again, if you have if you see something is not really working for you or something you have any questions, please don't hesitate, ask because we have uh, just two users, three users in the room. Yeah, we have actually three users in the room. Uh, but uh, uh, so all audience now in the blue chat but probably we awaited some problems or some questions don't hear it. okay now let's go back to this uh, third example and what will happen in this Jupyter notebook is just we're gonna use uh, this uh, Jupyter notebook to plot some plots from uh, this middle room file so instead of clicking all the cells, like cell by cell, uh, you can press run in the menu on the top, and there should be an option run all cells. And if you click it, it will just automatically run cell by cell. All right? So what actually happens in this file is uh, pretty straightforward, once again, if you don't know Python, but you know uh, roots. So we are using the pi root, Python binding to root in this package, and uh, first cell is just import this root. And then if you uh, remember in this bigger root file, there was a vector meson directory and there are four plots. So if I am switching back to this tutorial, right? Uh, so in the second uh, plot, we just open this file, get this vector meson directory, and actually get uh, uh, this uh, histogram by name. Then, once again, it's pretty the same API, uh, if you're not familiar with PyRoot, with the C++ root. So we just create the canvas and follow the draw on this histogram. And actually, the same happens uh, in the bottom plate. So what's happening here, we just create canvas divided by three and actually plot three different plots over here. Uh, so, uh, once again, the plots are not interactive. Let's try to make them interactive. To do this, uh, in, on the first cell over here, there this is called uh, magic. It's called, uh, it's in the Jupyter lab, it's called Jupyter magic. This thing called JavaScript root off. When it's off, it plots all plots just like the plain pictures, actually PNG pictures. But if you run this JavaScript on, and we actually have to do once again run of cells. And then it should uh, make all the plots interactive. Like this. So now, once again, all the plots became interactive. So uh, I can, for example, zoom in, zoom out, and do all the usual things that you can do with all, all and most of the things they implemented probably most of the things uh, that you can do usually with root plots. Uh, uh, sometimes, unfortunately, this thing doesn't work. I mean, like JavaScript. So by default, in this Docker image, it's switched off. Uh, and if something is not working, like you don't see the slots, or they are blocked, there's a white space because of it, you actually can handle the situation. But by now, let's just let us say that JavaScript JS root off to have a playing plot and there will be no actually problems with it. And uh, that's probably when we start talking about uh, what's working, what is not working, it's uh, probably a good uh, place to say that uh, we are going to release updated image. Uh, so this actually tutorial uses the same image that was used for user group meeting in Paris. And uh, we've done this because, because we are going, we are preparing like a pretty large update with everything renovated. But as you can guess, actually, a lot of developers had a new year as their deadline. And as uh, you can imagine, too, some of the developers actually have very big packages, I will not name them, uh, actually kind of didn't succeed uh, by their deadline. So, but we still hope that we will release new updated versions with such delicious fixes like very soon. So I would say that our deadline is this month. But in reality, we'll try to do this uh, up to the next. So if we start to talking about when something is not working, here is a sign kind of several 
uh, tips about the Drupal app itself, some kind of crash course, what you do if something is not working. Uh, so please proceed to this uh, uh, notebook number four, Jupiter. Okay, uh, probably the name does. So uh, let me a little bit show, tell you about how actually uh, this Jupyter notebooks work and what you can do if something is not working in the next or in here or in the next example. So uh, to do this, here is the actually uh, diagram of how it works at all. So you definitely know that you run this in browser, which means that there should somewhere be a server. So the server runs in the Docker image. But what is really important for us here is that each notebook has so-called kernel. It's a process which actually runs all the things that you run in this cell. And uh, on the top right over here, you can see that there is a Python 3 kernel right now. The kernels might be of different languages. And actually, on this, uh, on uh, very this, uh, the same uh, Docker image, we have a C++ root kernel, and you can run the same notebooks in C++, not in Python. Right? So when something goes wrong and something comes, for example, when uh, this kernel starts working, uh, it goes to the infinite loop and they figure out, oh my god, it's an infinite loop, what you do. There is a kernel tab on the top, and there is actually options that you can uh, restart kernel, you can restart kernel here on output, or this option actually on the both tabs in the kernel, and it's run. It's called restart kernel and run on cell. That kind of resets all the back uh, uh, the background part. And also, you can certainly, if you say it's your notebook, you can certainly just uh, reload the screen and uh, it should also work. No problem. So, let's go further with our tutorials and uh, let's proceed to number five. So, uh, what happens here in this notebook, if before, we used uh, Julia pre-made analysis, which probably is not what you want, right? You don't want to uh, just run Julia pre-made analysis. Here's uh, some way how you can process the, this, this example actually shows how you process right in the notebook some uh, root file, which we created by this root plugin. So just a little bit to you, for you to recall. Uh, so we have in this, uh, Book file, we have the directory events, and we have some uh, events related output that went through this. Right. So, for this, we will plot some simple Angular distribution, and I will try and hope that just in the morning the guts of the tutorials were not, were not kind for me. But I will just try initially set JavaScript root on to have uh, the all plots uh, to be uh, interactive. And now, once again, I uh, press the run and run itself and to build the bot. And uh, what's happening inside the cells? Uh, yeah, that's probably once again uh, the problem that I told about. It's a little bit embarrassing for uh, this tutorial. I hope it works for you. Uh, <clears throat> I pressed it and it says, yeah, it didn't. It, it says the uh, attribute error. Uh, okay, but if a previous slide was about trying to tame this thing, let's try actually to do this. Let me first actually review the thing. Still not running yet. But then I try to restart everything. Server side. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it stops working right on the tutorial. So after morning tutorial, I know that it's probably always uh, funny to hear the developers say that everything works, right? But actually, uh, yeah, only after uh, it didn't work in the morning tutorial. Uh, it, it's run all the way like, five or six times in a row afternoon. <laughs> and then it stops working on the evening tutorial. That, 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 that behaves how it should be. Okay, I just switched JavaScript off. And I now got this thing uh, all plotted as just a regular plot. 
right? And in the end, we have this uh, JavaScript to do To finish with that uh, JavaScript not working stuff, we're actually uh, working with root team to fix this. And they're taking us very seriously. So uh, from the uh, first issue that we that happened in, uh, during the summer, they even dedicated a person to fix this. And uh, hopefully in new version, everything works okay. So I still hope that for you, that for most of you, everything works because it works like 95% of the time. But if not, uh, for now, you can just use this JavaScript. So that is actually the reason why it's called fine. Okay, now let's go back and see what happens in this file. So uh, initially, we once again just import root. And we, okay, at yeah, first I need to say that the, the most important part, there's many ways how you can process the root file from uh, Python or even from C++, right? So there are at least four ways, and one of them, the most simple one, is C3Draw, which is very simple in the beginning, and very simple to use, but then when your example becomes complex, right, it becomes more and more and more complex and more and more cumbersome. So there's certainly a way that you can just iterate over when that you usually do, just have an event loop and you just do everything in this loop. Uh, there is a Python package called uproot, which actually uh, allows you to open and see what's inside the root files and plot everything and get iterated with root objects right without having root installed. You just do pip install uproot and it actually works pretty great if you are using just Python. And finally, root 7 has uh, the new feature or new functionality called root data frame, which is uh, a new way how you can, as I say, propose the new way how you do your analysis with root files. So for this particular example, so we used you know, just a simple C3 draw, right? Uh, because all other is kind of getting uh, more root tutorials and getting outside of this tutorial. So once again, we just root file, open the file, or Beagle root, which is the file we created so far. And this API creating histograms should be very familiar for you, so we just create a number of histograms. So we were actually, in this example, we are building the neutron distribution, so we actually uh, put a cut with uh, asking only Python, and there is actually another variant of cut. Uh, you can actually play with it by yourself. Uh, then we open uh, events directory and the tree, and basically we just call this draw function filling those histograms. Uh, all the rest of the files, we just once again starting to create some canvas and plot those histograms on the canvas. So this large piece of code is just to have uh, this presentation of this histogram. I just want to say one thing is this example works. It works on mine. It just have you have to follow through executing every single one, so it actually works. Yeah, I mean, thank you very much. <laughs> because <laughs> yeah, works. Uh, it it works all the time when there is no like uh, I don't know how many people <laughs> on the room. <laughs> when there is no people, it works all the time. So I hope but, but yeah. maybe it makes a difference if you run if you do it step by step. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it, yeah. It, it might. I, I'm pretty sure that if I uh, several times just uh, refresh everything, it will start working either way. I just don't want to uh, kind of waste this tutorial time. Uh, so, okay, and, and once, once again, I hope that with release of the new software, this is going to be fixed. That's it. So we'll just forget about this issue. So, thank you. So, the next one is number six. That is probably the most important uh, part of uh, this tutorial, how we use uh, uh, how we use EAC smear. But it's also very important because I will show how you can navigate uh, with this Jana and stuff by yourself and this Python package. Uh, because before this, I acted in this tutorial like a magician taking out rabbits out of the head, like here, here is the plugin. And hey, here is the Julia pre-made analysis. And hey, here are the histograms, right? But that's not what you really want. You want to know what are the old uh, kind of possible plugins, what they do to understand what's the framework. So a uh, picture on the top actually shows uh, what is going to be in this tutorial. 
with one kind of uh, misleading stuff that we in this tutorial, I mean, in this uh, Jupyter notebook here. So actually, six and seven uh, notebooks are go together, and you cannot proceed with seven until you finish the six. Uh, we have this issue from users, so I'm just telling you this explicitly. So uh, we will use a heuristic uh, simulated events for this thing, and we will create two files, one smeared and one is not smeared. So in the beginning, once again, first cell is just input. But then the question is how you navigate with this API. And there's a little bit more of this uh, Jupyter magics. So if after any object, you will put a question sign like this, so it's Janet's question, and I run it, it actually prints me some uh, description of what this object is about, right? So it can tell, tell this genre, class it, I also configure stuff, and something like this. You can actually turn on uh, the component help if you press on the right button and then uh, you select that contextual help. It will actually uh, open the new window, but then you can actually dock the window somewhere uh, on the right, for example. And when you click on anything like uh, Jana or this function, it actually shows you the kind of the information, whatever information it has about it, right? So, and also finally, there's another uh, uh, very nice thing that if I just start writing something and I hit the tab key, so the tab key, it actually uh, does all the completion, showing the information about uh, all other stuff. So, but that don't give you the answer, what are the plugins and how you navigate the plugins. So to do this, we use this uh, function called jana.plugins graphical user interface, graphical GUI, so jana. Uh, when you run it, you see the interface like this. So at this time, this interface is pretty, complete, uh, is pretty simplistic, and we understand that when there are going to be like 100 plugins, Probably this interface will not work, so we will continue to develop this. But uh, this is uh, working for, for now, and this is our kind of initial idea how to make this life easier. I just have a quick question. How yes. do you just collect that cell and run it? Is there a, a quick uh, command? Uh, actually, this happens because of Bluejin. So the question, I don't know if you, if you have know, the question is how I run uh, those cells so quickly. Okay. And the answer is actually it's a Bluejin Blue flux. So I am doing it not so quickly on my machine. Uh -huh. But Bluejin Blue actually skips some uh, animation, right. some mouse, my mouse movements. And it's my look that it just happens instantly. Uh, uh, probably I could have uh, this nice plugin where the mouse cursor actually goes like you don't do any addresses or whatever, but I do have this now. Okay, let's go back to this graphical user interface. So now that's all plugins that uh, now are available or relevant uh, for now. And if you click just on any plugin, it gives you the kind of short description of what this plugin is about and why it's, uh, why it's uh, actually needed. So, for example, I clicked on uh, Beagle, and it says like Beagle is benchmark EA generated for the production, and actually it even has a link to the documentation. So when I click on it, it just opens some documentation of this Beagle generator, and one can read a little bit about it. So, and definitely on the left side, you see the button, and actually when you hit the button. It actually starts activating or deactivating plugins. So for this example, we will use HappenC Reader over here. So when I hit this HappenC Reader, it starts creating this uh, configuration over here in the bottom. So then uh, plugins might have parameters by themselves. So if you click on this genre plugin, right, you will see uh, its parameters on the left. Once again. Uh, if you click, for example, on uh, one of these uh, one of these cells, it will give you some kind of uh, uh, documentation of what this uh, what this sub parameters actually means, right? So, for example, for this, actually, to run this example, uh, we would like to process 20,000 events, 20,000, 
And don't forget, please, to check this checkbox. And you can instantly check uh, what's happening in the bottom. So it's uh, plug in JAMA and number and it's main download. We also would like to change the uh, output name of the file, and it's going to be capmc underscore sm, which means mute. We also enable the stuff. And uh, here, is, uh, here it is. So it's a uh, journal plugin, 20,000 events, and output that have to see here too. And then uh, actually, we go to this EIC smear plugin and we enable it. And it has uh, one major parameter which one has to enable, right? It's a detector name. So <coughs> now, by uh, default, uh, there's a JLAG detector, but also. Here you can set up a detector like this, Beast or Phoenix or even Toys, and kind of run it with different detectors and compare. So don't forget to click on this uh, checkbox near this parameter, so you have like plugin EIC smear and then detector equal to JLI. So let's yes, and finally, uh, finally we want to at this point run once more. Just pre-made uh, few parameters of the chair plugin, uh, so there's, it, it doesn't need any kind of change or any additional parameters. So let's double check that we enable HFMC reader plugin to read HFMC file. In uh, this Java plugin, we just specified 20 that we want to process 20,000 events. What's going to be the output file name? For EIC smear, we just specify that the detector is JLike. And the analysis in this case uh, is the open chart, so we just use this open chart plugin. Then what you actually do is maybe a little bit uh, manual, but you just select what you have here and copy it over here. So you just have uh, created this configuration of plugins. So it's just JANA, plugin happens see reader, JANA, uh, plugin. Generous 20,000 events, EAC smear detected gel like, open chart, and I run it. We say that it's configured, right? And then uh, once again, we set the source file and we process uh, this 20,000 events. So while it's processing, uh, on the next cell, uh, I just tell a little bit that uh, this actually cell shows that you can uh, process not only, I mean, you can use this API just in like one line, right? Not creating like before this Jana object, whatever, just do everything in one line. We create Jana, we configure it fully, like what's plugins, what's source, and in the same cell, we just say Jana run. So it has all of the same configuration. It doesn't have EIC SMEA plugin, so it will just uh, process. Uh, Everything from the HIP, uh, from the HIPMC file directly, and uh, we in the end have uh, just two files: one smeared and one not smeared. You can actually once again click on them and see uh, what's inside. They're much less actually what uh, is on uh, And we go to the final uh, to the final uh, notebook. With what it does, it actually, and I uh, just run all cells here, and what actually this uh, notebook does, it just uh, creates canvases to compare the data from not smeared and smeared file. So once again, it uses the spiral, just open two root files, you just open two uh, identical, uh, ident identical uh, directories, histograms, and so on. And probably one interesting addition to what happened before is just fitting uh, using this uh, fitting uh, fitting on this plot. So I just show that uh, by very uh, usual for good users uh, functions, you can also do a fitting over here. Uh, I probably already, if uh, got of the tutorials was not kind to me, uh, this will probably not work for me once again. Uh, just to completely ruin all the belief of the stability of our software. Sorry about this. I hope it's worth for you. But anyway, it's pretty fun when it's interactive uh, how it shows the parameters of the fitting, how the mouse works here. 
So uh, that was basically it with uh, interactive tutorials. And we going back to actually slides. And usually after these tutorials, we already know uh, sort of kind of standard questions that users have. But if you have any questions about kind of interactively running things, please go ahead, ask them, or we will proceed a little bit with the presentation where I go try to understand. And I have a, a one quick question on the, the example number six. And the Jenna plugin GUI part. So for mine, I, 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 I run that selected cell, and what I'm getting is that loading wed wedges, and, and then I got stuck in uh, Yeah, it, it might have, it's actually this plugin uses, uses iframe. And uh, if you have a, if you have a blocker, it can actually block it thinking that it has uh, JavaScript, uh, JavaScript prototype. Okay, I have to disable yeah. the app. Yeah. yeah, I mean, or you just can uh, create a new file, you know, or you can just uh, learn how uh, to teach your app blocker that it's not really a uh, problem. You, 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 can, you can owl this page. So, uh, yeah, it's, I cannot say that you have any issue. I'm just using app blocker. Okay, <laughs> got it. Thanks. I have a question. Right. Yeah. So, if I want to uh, look at the source file, for example, the one you just used, and uh, called her wig six underscore to indicate dot mc. How do I see it? Do I just go to the directory, or I can see it on uh, uh, JLab? Uh, actually, there are many ways how we do it. Uh, in general, in this, so this is a little bit complicated. You can just go to data, and uh, here are the, those files. So uh -huh. if you go. To now it takes time because it has uh, many events there at the lot, but actually on new version they improve this and this uh, will load kind of automatically as well. All right, here's the happens. Okay. Right. Okay. Here's the okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But also, and, 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 uh, and uh, questions like this I, I would like to cover and show in this advanced part, right? But when, since you already started it, uh, if you so this Jupyter lab thing can run Jupyter notebooks, but also you can create a terminal. And in this terminal, it's just a standard uh, terminal in this uh, Linux and this Docker. So you can still <coughs> your browser and you can just go there to the data and uh, have uh, all the files there. So uh, as I said, there's many ways. And I will actually, in the future, okay. the slide. Got it. Right. So uh, the first and actually main question out of this, so, so what now we should use the Jupyter lab for everything and forget what we, what we have? And the answer is certainly no. We uh, don't want to hide uh, the complexity, right? So if we have a complex system such as root, they are complex because there are some persons, some, some persons, right? And we cannot just hide all the complexity through the GUI. So uh, all our software st stack is organized in layers. So kind of the higher level is Jupyter Lab and this graphical user interface, and they are very good to use for tutorial and maybe documentation. I know that uh, some students uh, can do all the analysis and they do pretty complex analysis on just Jupyter Lab, and it actually works okay even without introducing new Python files, right? But if you don't like it, don't need it, or feel that you need something like this, you can go to layer kind of deeper. And you can still use Python uh, to configure the stuff, to do the CD configuration. This, this was shown in the example to run Jan. But if you uh, kind of would like to work uh, a right directly from the, your console with your editors and C++ and Jana plugins directly skipping all the Python, it's okay too. So everything is organized in the lab. And what's important about this, uh, this, this problem is actually called complexity scaling and how we try to, uh, to escape this complexity scale, we try on each layer of uh, this thing to be very explicit how we, how the underlying layer is introduced. So as I showed you, for example, when you do this channel run, we always try to show what exact comment uh, is there underneath. So you can, for example, copy this comment and run it through your comment line without going into Python if you don't like all of them. So then 
The next question about Python is that, okay, so Python, but uh, a lot of our users have an expertise in root, right? And uh, and uh, maybe they don't want to use all the browser stuff in there. So if, the, if you don't want to use the browser stuff, you can add this bash, uh, uh, bash comment uh, after this Docker run stuff. So actually, it's not just in bash shell. And then when you navigate somewhere, or for example, you clone your project, you can run this JLab comment. It's not Jefferson Lab, it's Jupyter Lab. It's just they have the same abbreviation, right? And it will open this Jupyter Lab environment in, in, in this directory, in this particular directory. So not obviously for this tutorial, right? And finally, as I already mentioned a little bit before, so we have not only Python, but Troop C++ kernel. And let me go back a little bit to uh, those examples, right? So when you click a new launcher, there's a possibility to create a root uh, C++ notebook. So it's not a Python. Now, uh, if I don't know, it says everything is everything is uh, at C++ here. So it's for example, double T X. I don't know. So uh, actually, uh, here is in in my presentation. I would switch back. So here are some serial lines I checked that they work. And that is probably also a good time to say that uh, besides this tutorial folder, there are several folders more. So one of them is Explore with more examples, which uh, you can study by yourself. And uh, the development, uh, development in this Docker image is something kind of more advanced stuff. I will show it right after we are joined. And, uh, for example, where the software is installed and how you get to this Yulia analysis file. Uh, but uh, in the new Docker image, which we are going to release, like as I said, on the next week, there are going to be much more documented and much more uh, examples written in this uh, Drupal notebook. Now, going back here, so once again, uh, if you would like to experiment with this, you can take uh, my presentation, put this line that this is a pure kind of C++ lines, and you also should see the histograms that was plotted in this big old book file. So uh, if you don't want to learn Python, don't learn Python. Uh, uh, so then uh, the next question is, OK, so now if you have a kind of really huge file and more, it's really more important when you have full simulation. Uh, can you run it on farm or how, what, what should it? And uh, the answer to that is that uh, we are trying to create kind of workflow-oriented software. So what workflow was shown in this tutorial, actually uh, here in this blue dot, that uh, we assume that you want to first uh, do some configuration, so maybe change code or something. Then you run a little sample, or maybe not little, but some sample. See that uh, the plot is probably okay. So that's, uh, that's something that you would like to process full. And then, which is now being developed, you can run it on farms. So for user, uh, for EIC user group, we defined OSG kind of as the first uh, platform that we are going to use, uh, right? So and uh, on the previous meeting, I can the same tutorial, so maybe some of you were there. Uh, so we promised that we started to work there. We have a lot of progress on it, and it's kind of closed. So our idea is that the right workflow is that uh, when you work, maybe with this notebook, maybe not with this notebook, right? And you see that this configuration is right, then you have a button or you have a function, just now send it to OSG. And it just sends it to OSG. That's just our vision. Because the idea behind uh, this stack, this container, or you can say behind this framework, that usually in our field uh, we provide just tools, like here is this package, there is that package, and you provide some documentation to it, right? And then the users have to just figure out how to use it. While in reality, they just need a workflow, how they run logical, how they develop stuff, how they configure stuff. And that's something that we wanted to provide you with all this stuff. So the next question, as we usually have, how can I save the data? Because when you exit, when you actually uh, queue the Docker container and run it once again, uh, you will see that everything is great. So this happens because of this RM flag. 
We use the CRM plug in the initial comments because uh, for the sake of the repeatability of tutorial for us as good as you exit and everything starts once again. But if you start working on it, it's probably not what you want. And if you remove this remove plug, yeah, remove, remove, uh, so then uh, it will act like a, a virtual machine. So it will say, say the next time you run it, you will get to the point when you left it, right? But also, uh, these tutorials, for example, are just a uh, JIT repository called Entry Point Workspace EPV, it's W. Uh, and uh, kind of we are working, where the, I would think how it should be good organized that you just clone your project and you can do it right now. And in the updated version, we have a package called Jupyter Lab JIT, which actually allows you to, uh, to have this visual JIT helper where you can just submit your, you work with your repository, with your code, with your analysis, and you can just submit it right out of the Jupyter Lab. Now you can do this with just a regular JIT comma plug. It's okay. So uh, then uh, that is pretty much the main question that you probably should have right now. So now, okay, you have this Docker image. How you can process your Monte Carlo files and start actually playing with the results and start seeing what's happening behind it, right? So, and uh, the answer to that is that uh, it's very simple by adding just one flag, minus V and uh, your uh, directory on your machine with uh, your files and some directory uh, on, uh, on the Docker image container. And so it's minus V source and destination. And we propose this home EIC user EPW share folder just because if you will link your directory on your machine to this folder, you will instantly see it in this uh, image by default. If you are a Windows user, there might be some issues for you because what will happen when you will bind your directory to the thing, Windows will ask you to share this drive. So if this is the drive C which you have with your Windows installation, uh, kind of sharing the whole drive may be not uh, security, uh, maybe not secure. And uh, anyway, if you share the, when you share the drive, it actually asks you to provide you some, um, uh, some password, administration password. And if you have some not started uh, plugin uh, way, like for example, using tokens or face recognition or something, uh, there might be issues you actually type in this. So uh, it's a very well known issue for Docker on Windows. And uh, and uh, actually, Docker developers say that they fixed it. I checked it yesterday, and for me, it didn't work still, right? So uh, I'm not sure, maybe it's a new version. While still, you can use a code Windows subsystem for Linux 2, to is important here because they already start trying a small virtual machine. They are actually running Ubuntu on your Windows. And it's pretty fast and it just runs Docker inside and it works perfectly. Or virtual box, which I a little bit don't like, especially on the laptop because it's slow, but okay, <coughs> anyway, that's a way to run. And yes, if you are using this uh, common light on the top of this presentation, you probably don't want to use a RAM plug. So the next question, so how to install things on my machine? Because if you are an expert, well, for example, I am just judging for myself. So uh, my instant reaction and everything is try to install everything on my machine and open it with my last editor and start navigating code. So in this uh, tutorial, we use the Docker container. And we also will provide with this release, we will provide the singularity container of this. And that is our main kind of right now distribution way. But at the same time, there's uh, the thing called eGPM or Packet Manager, eGen Package Manager, which actually we used internally to build all the stack, which you can use on your own risk if you are using Ubuntu or Red Hat or some kind of federal or something. Right? So uh, if you're an expert, you can run, run it. You can treat it just like automated build scripts, like usually everybody has, right? So you can just run, run it. It should be work fine. But again, if you have Ubuntu, uh, Debian, or whatever the standard Linux is, and if it's not running, please uh, let me know. I will or ask, I mean, ask about this. We will just fix it. 
But we also have plans to uh, provide some treatment file binaries, so, so and might here CBN test, as maybe everybody do now. And we also have been plans to install test installations on uh, BNL and JLab arms. So if you have been on JLab accounts, you can actually uh, have everything pre-installed. So uh, finally, that's pretty much we're getting to the end of it. And uh, so this tutorial was really introductory. And uh, the next tutorial, which is going to be like much more serious, I would say that it's going to be on Wednesday, January 29th at BNL. Uh, so the first details will be announced on January 23, and it will be more on for detector developers and detector development part. It will be just for simulation of AIC detectors. This tutorial will show how you modify existing concepts uh, of the detectors and uh, how you integrate, for example, your sub detector uh, to one of these detectors, right? And the same tutorials will be repeated uh, approximately on February 6th. It's not a final date, uh, but it should be somewhere near the date or just on February 6th. Please stay tuned to it. Right? And uh, telling that. This tutorial of today was really uh, kind of introductory. There are a lot of topics that haven't been covered, and that probably will have tutorials in the future. We just didn't uh, kind of discuss it fully and define it inside the software user group. But definitely, there should be a tutorial on EIC smear itself, how you actually change the parameter or create your own absolutely new detector, right, for EIC. And there should be a tutorial for this Java 2 and Java framework, which more for what are those plugins, how you create them. We also see that it might be beneficial to kind of organize tutorials of these new root features of how we run things on OSG and maybe some new data science for Drupal Plus. And certainly while on uh, January 29th, probably reconstruction will be mentioned, there should be kind of separated tutorial on reconstruction of the OER. So please stay tuned. Uh, I will provide uh, next link how we can zoom. But now I wanted to uh, start thanking you and say that uh, at this point we really need your feedback. So we kind of created the stack, and uh, you are the users who start using it. And we are at the point where we really need feedback. And actually, when uh, you will now ask us something to provide some problems that something is not working, something that you would like to see this way or that way. I would uh, guarantee you that we will be very serious about all issues and all actually requests that you would. Because our goal is to actually grow the software with the user input. Uh, because you cannot just write software, right? You can just grow software as a tree or something like this. And it should go with your input. So thank you very much uh, for this kind of official kind of presentation. I would say that this is the link how you links how you can um, contribute to I mean have a feedback, and we created the Slack channel, and uh, this uh, code on the right you can scan it to get to the Slack channel, but it's actually easy. It's AIC user group and we have. There are the find support channel, and we will have a support shift where kind of persons will be dedicated like week by week who is supporting. So we cannot guarantee like uh, one minute response 24 7, but we will try to keep very fast and prompt response to any issues or any suggestions or any something. And there is certainly a mailing list for uh, this support effort. So uh, thank you very much once again for the tutorial. If you just don't interesting in going into too much details about uh, this framework, we are just officially adjourning. I will actually show uh, some uh, a little bit advanced stuff. For example, where this uh, plugins are located and how you can edit it on something. But uh, now probably if you have kind of major questions, how do you do that? How you do that? How you see that there are some faults? It's a good time for you to ask it and for me to try to answer. Uh, in general, we are joined once again. Thank you very much. I'm curious, people, please stay. Any questions? Yes. The 
uh, Slack, uh, the uh, invitation, the QR code, it says it's no longer active. Oh. Uh, I just scanned it and it says no longer active. I don't know whether. All right. No, no. Okay. We will <laughs> we'll know. Now you can. Uh, it's, it's easy. It's really easy. Uh, name is EIC user group. EICUG.slag.com. Yeah, I see that Marcus already wrote it down. So it's in QR code. Where will the recording of this tutorial be posted? Uh, there is a Nico page for this. And actually, I have it in the uh, INFM. And in this announcement we have in the mail link, we have uh, like several times this, this page. Uh, one thing, if you are, uh, if you are actually, uh, so actually, yeah. I have it open in my browser actually, right? Uh, we put it, yeah, we put it on the website. So uh, there, there are actually several things. We put it on the website. So uh, in the beginning of this tutorial, uh, there was a website, uh, eic. Uh, io, right? And you can see it in the link from the, the, over there. And actually, uh, with the next release, uh, we uh, will put this presentation or kind of the presentation results to this to so you know the Docker image so you can actually see it right side uh, with Jupyter Lab. You actually can see the PDF file so you can also see we'll be able to see this presentation. So uh, at, at this point uh, I probably yeah it's probably a good idea for me just to go to this page. Right. I should have it. Yeah, okay. Uh, I actually will probably uh, just a minute later, I will put it to this uh, bridges. Yes, Marcus probably will see. Uh, and uh, finally, you can go to Slack and ask for it, and we will put it to the Slack. <laughs> I have a question regarding the Jupyter jlab.org. Do you log on for that uh, just through your normal logging information? Because I'm not able to get into it. Uh, so uh, there are the servers in BML and in Jupyter in, in JLab. So both serve as Jupyter, Jupyter Hub where you can use it. Right. So right now I think that we are both of them we are team again, so that's why we didn't officially announce that. For Jefferson Lab, you can log into the server from the internal network at this point. Oh, no, also okay. outside. It was announced oh, before. Ah, okay, maybe maybe they already changed. It. But the second uh, question is that uh, then you can choose the image that you would like to use there in the Jupyter Lab, right? Right. So I'm, and, I'm on this page. Yes, and but there is yes, and there is no, and at this point there is no our image because we want to put there our new image, and we just <coughs> made those developers to finish with those packages. This is finally test that everything will get released. And it will go on this JupyterHub.jlab.org. Yeah. But go to the Jefferson Lab help desk to ask them yeah. why you cannot log in. That, yeah. that is not something this tutorial provides. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's not one of yeah. Point, yeah. Ask them. You, you should be able to log in with your Jefferson Lab account. Yes, I just saw the IT people. Yes. That's not, that's not this tutorial and also not our responsibility. <laughs> Uh, so, uh, is there, are there any other questions? So, okay, uh, then I'll, uh, I'll actually go a little bit to the advanced section of it. And the first question that actually was asked uh, so three out of four runs of this tutorial were like, okay, now if we have really serious analysis, what should we run? Should we run for C++? Then where are those actually Yulia plugins? Uh, where is the software, real software, where is it based on this Docker image, how we can access it? That's uh, the first question that usually people ask. And if this question haven't been asked now, I believe that this question anyway stands, you know, in your hands, right? And 
then the second question that okay, is the Jupiter is a Python and the Python is a slow language, do we have some performance hit out of it, right? So I'll start from the second question because it's easy for the easy one and the answer is no. Basically what just happens in Python, as you probably guessed it, is just a wrapper just runs its uh, separate C process. So it doesn't introduce any slowness of Python to this, so it just runs C. And also uh, today in the morning somebody uh, noticed that there is a, like only one and seven uh, kilohertz of event rate. It was just a reading file, right, and doing some simple processing and how but it's pretty slow. And uh, for example, the answer to this is maybe that uh, how KPC text KPC files reader is implemented by their own. Uh, so, so we use this uh, KPC library from, uh, from their own team. And so actually, when we are running Docker on Windows, and if you know the but Docker on Windows actually runs the virtual box under it, which has the issues with their virtual uh, with virtual disk. So uh, when uh, run. When we run on this, when we actually we uh, did some analysis uh, of the performance, uh, and probably we'll show it on the presentation of John itself. It has very little kind of overhead to solve the C++ framework on this modularity, and it runs pretty fast. But now uh, there is a more serious question about: Okay, now where is the code? Can you show me where is this code and this uh, thing? What should I call the Python and Jupyter, or what? How can I? do the really complex analysis. First, to answer this once again, I was a witness that uh, especially students like to do everything in Jupyter Lab and somehow it works. I mentioned this upload package actually before, which actually allows you to read the root files uh, in Python. And if you go to this upload page, you will find a plot that shows that it reads uh, root files faster than root. Yeah. At least that was the claim. Uh, at least uh, this means that uh, that you can actually do a lot of processing in Python. Okay, you don't like Python, or you don't want to study Python, or something like this. So uh, basically, everything is uh, done in Java. It's everything is just modules of Java, which is C++ framework. And as I said before, for me, for example, it always was just easier to actually uh, open it in my editors with my set of plugins in this editor and start digging the code, right? So once again, we're not trying to hide anything in one sense. Uh, it's quite opposite. We're trying to make everything transparent. So I can, for example, show you where the parameters of uh, the smearing allocated, all right? So, uh, and I want to say that, okay, if you want to run this console or something uh, using the Docker just like a light virtual machine, which actually on Linux it runs pretty on the same speed as Linux itself, you can just uh, install what you need in the Docker container, right? So then there's the way how you do this, uh, how you can install it on your machine with your own boot if you're an expert. But okay, where are things allocated? So in this development uh, folder number three, they are kind of not really ready examples uh, with advanced stuff. But if you see one of them tells how you can actually submit stuff how you can from, from the JIT over here. But if we open this, uh, for example, view EIC smear parameters, IPython, this whole book this stuff, right? So uh, in Jupyter notebooks, let me double change the time in the presentation more just to make a little bit uh, text a little bit larger. So uh, if we start comment with exclamation sign, it actually will run the system comment. So for example, if I uh, make this exclamation sign and uh, run it, it will run the ls comment on this directory, right? So as I said before, uh, we're using this eGPM uh, manager to actually start build and install software. So if you run here eGPM, uh, it's uh, called this package manager. And this, uh, if you are using this comment without arguments, it just shows where they, what is the software and where it is installed and some other information about what was actually happening in this Docker image, right? So you can see this eJana, junk, and other. Uh, for example, 
AIC smear, which is used as a library. So uh, you once again, uh, you can uh, uh, open the terminal and you can actually do the same. So if you in terminal just run this eGPM, you just instantly see where is the software and where is it installed in the software, right? But now we are going to, uh, I'm a little bit jumped between this example, I'm going to view Jana plugins. So where are the nodes actually C++ of those Jana plugins? So once again, uh, so the first column is called this eGPM and it prints you where is the software, right? And then, uh, and it actually tells you where this eJana is <coughs> located. And now we go to this eJana and link, uh, that's this column. And link its plugins folders to plugins directory over here. So let's just create a link over here, right? So if we update it over here, we have this plugins folder, and we can, for example, even just sitting in the Jupyter, not, not opening. In the, I mean, we can open the terminal. It's easy enough, right? First of all, like so. I have a quick question. How yes. do you uh, open a terminal? Uh, so uh, okay, it's probably once again just to click. Or if you run file, and then there's uh, one way is just a new or new launcher. And uh, certainly, there's, as, as I showed in my presentation, there's always a way that you just don't load any of this Jupyter uh, stuff. You just put bash in there, and it is open. You will just turn right. Right, uh, so we link the stuff, and uh, there are the plugins. And for example, if we go to Dresden Mason, uh, you see what are the contents of these libraries, and uh, you can actually uh, go to, for example, I don't know, the Dresden Mason process, so that is actually for this plugin. And you see some actually C++, it's maybe not very nice as much, and now, now much nicer format, format. Uh, now because we clean up the code. You know, this, this is raw, you get like. So don't blame physicists uh, for their code. They are great, actually. Uh, so uh, now the question is probably if you change some code, you need to recompile stuff, right? So I'm going back to this uh, development over here for this, uh, let's actually call this everything. Uh, yeah. So let's go back to this view yet this new parameter. So once again, uh, it tells us where the plugins. Now uh, I can just once again this uh, link this EAC smear plugins to this directory and just in Jupyter Lab edit this thing. I mean, I'm not proposing that one is uh, using the Jupyter Lab to really edit C++ files. I think. Don't, don't get me wrong, right? It's just a way that even without going out of this uh, IDE, you can do this stuff, right? And actually, yes, and uh, here is the implementation. So if you would like to see the beast detector, here is, for example, the beast detector and some uh, numbers for this performance. Once again, certainly EIC smear by itself needs some additional tutorial, which we will probably have in the future. But if now you have a question how how we can where we can navigate now and just go into this advanced process, right? Uh, because once again, it's uh, Uh, so then the next question, imagine you, you just change uh, some parameters from the beast to whatever the vector, right? So how you recompile stuff? And that is once again kind of uh, uh, pretty close to what is our philosophy. So EGPM packet by itself have a comment to rebuild this package. I know that this comment looks maybe a little bit uh, awkward because it's installed eGiana and then add the strange flag, flag symbol. So in your version, there's just a common eGPM build Jana, and that's it, and this will it, right? And we can run it, and uh, bam, it gets rebuilt. But what's really important here, that once again, we're not trying, if you are an expert, if you are getting sick of out of this Jupyter notebook, we're not trying to hide anything from you. Actually, we try to provide the explicit way what would happen. So if you'd like to go to, uh, so we actually write what happened. So if you would like just to open it with uh, CMake and run it with CMake and figure out what exactly happens there. So here we explicitly say what's happening inside you in this build during this comment. So we change the directory to this one, working directory, right? We're executing the CMake comments with this flag. So uh, next time I see you. 
all we try to do is really provide this layer. So you can start this very simple example, and you run it and get familiar with it, and then uh, you kind of uh, go in as much deep as possible, and all the way we will try to provide you explicit information how we do it. And yeah, that's basically it. That's what I want to show by today. If you have any more questions or any more comments or something, please uh, let me know. I probably will leave this page for several more minutes. So you could actually, for example, plug into the SUG Slack channel. So uh, if there's no question, questions, thank you very much once again for your attention. And have a good evening. Have a good night. I have a question. Sure. So uh, let's just say if I, uh, instead of doing the Amazon or Open Charm, basically we just need to use those as an example to create a different uh, kind of uh, plugins, like what you just showed. Uh, excuse me, what is the question? So how you... Now, instead of trying to analyze as a, a specific channel like Open Channel or vMeson, like what's included in the examples, we just need to modify the files that you, you have for these uh, uh, particular two channels to our liking, right? Uh, no, 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 not really, actually. We showed in the, one of the first examples that, uh, uh, that you can... One thing that you can actually create the tree, the tree which you can uh, tree which you can analyze uh, whatever want, whatever way you want, right? So basically, if I'm pretty sure that you are not interested in this tree meta analysis, right? So and uh, just creating this plugin, yeah, that's that's the way uh, of doing things, right? You can, uh, but uh, it goes kind of outside of this tutorial, so probably we'll have Jana tutorial just in the future. But if uh, the information that is uh, that, we, uh, that was given right now is that uh, there's a way uh, for this, uh, where this tutorial process legal file, where we use this event writer plugin, and we write the actually. Uh, uh, the tree, the tree output, and if you use the AC smear, so in this T tree it will be smeared parameters, and then you can just use it for whatever analysis you would like. Uh, they're going to be PID, so you can see or look for whatever channels you would like. So this is just help how you can run it without smearing, with smearing, and actually in further tutorials we can show. But more, uh, more advanced plugins, yes. I mean, uh, if you would like to learn Java, we will be just happy. There's a documentation for it. Uh, for now, we will have tutorials for it in the future. We just think that it's kind of more advanced stuff for this introductory tutorial. Okay, thank you. Does this uh, answer your question or the. Yes, the yes, yes. <laughs> but yeah, I will email you if I have more questions. Thank you. Your own analysis, how to get started. Uh, yeah, so, uh, so uh, one suggestion from the uh, actually Mark was that part of the question was if you would like to do your own analysis, how would you start, right? So, uh, once again, uh, there are the uh, so probably you would like to start with the C3, and uh, you would like you can start whatever way you would like it, right? So, if I were to start it, frankly, frankly, I probably would start maybe from Python, right? But uh, I know a lot of people who would prefer uh, actually C++ and you can do this with this Docker image. Once again, uh, there are extended examples uh, in this folder and with this new image, there will be much more examples how you do stuff. Like processing this uh, image, like doing this analysis, not just using the uh, previous one. Any more questions? So you would suggest that we go through all those uh, stuff in the Explorer folder, right? Uh, could you repeat this? You would suggest we go through the second folder you're pointing to, the Explorer. Yeah, this. So that's, okay, uh, uh, never mind, thank you. Uh, so uh, once again, this is a bit all the docker image 
privilege because uh, there was a lot of users actually input for the first running this tutorial, and we use this docker uh, this user input to actually improve what's happening inside those notebooks. But uh, yeah, once again, uh, wait for the update to come. Okay, once again, thank you very much. Uh, please send us your feedback. It's very important for us. And once again, have a good night. All right. Yeah.